Hi everyone, and welcome to Exploring the Build. If you've just found this place, then welcome. And if you're returning, I'm glad to have you back. I'm Alex, and this is my channel where we explore and theorycraft different character builds for Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition. Today, we are doing another quick build video. And more than that, we're actually back with another set of quick builds. I'll be exploring four very brief character builds for Dungeons & Dragons 5e. And as always with character builds, if there are ever any builds you'd like to see me explore in the future, be sure to let me know in the comments below. For the concept of today's video, because it is Halloween, we are going to be doing the Monster Mash. What I mean by that is that we will be building four unique character builds for D&D that are based around four classic Halloween or horror pop culture monsters. We'll be making a werewolf build, a vampire build, a Frankenstein slash Dr. Frankenstein build, and then a Swamp Thing, creature from the Black Lagoon, swamp creature, type of build. Each one of these builds are very simplified and very straightforward, so without any further ado, let's jump into each of the builds. The first monster up in our monster mash is our werewolf. When building a werewolf, a lot of the features that make us werewolf-like are probably going to come down to flavoring and theme, but we'll still be able to pick up some features that are going to make us feel more bestial in nature, as well as give us resistances that you would expect a werewolf to have. For starters, we're going to be a long tooth shifter from Eberron rising from the last war. You can do whatever you would like with the ability scores and stats, but what a shifter gets is the ability to shift into a more bestial-like form. Already that hits our lycanthropic-esque flavor. Because we're a long tooth, when we do shift, which lasts for a minute and usually gives us temporary hit points, we also get the ability to use a bite attack as a bonus action. That bite attack deals a d6 plus our strength modifier piercing damage and basically replaces our regular unarmed attacks. If we pair this with the beast barbarian subclass from the barbarian class, we can actually feel a lot like a werewolf really early on. Right away, barbarians in their rage gives them damage resistance to piercing, slashing, and bludgeoning damage, and that feels appropriate for what we'd want a werewolf to actually have. As well, the beast barbarian can gain natural weapon attacks, such as claws, another bite, or even a tail. For us, we'd really like to use the claws because they do a d6, but once we take the attack action and use the claws at least once, we gain an extra attack with that attack action. That means at level five, after we get extra attack, we'd have two attacks regularly, a third attack from using the claws, and then we could use our bonus action for a fourth attack with our bite, assuming we're already shifted. That takes a little bit of setup with the bonus action to rage and the bonus action to shift, but all in all, it would make us thematically feel a lot like a werewolf having to take multiple turns to go through this big transformation. And once that transformation is done, we'd also have four attacks, which rivals a 20th level fighter, and we're just level five. I would say that's pretty much a werewolf build for us. Our second build is the vampire. Now the vampire is pretty interesting because it's going to be hard to make an actual full-fledged vampire, but we can get pretty close at least thematically. We're going to start off by taking the Dampyr lineage. All we really care about though is the fact that it's going to give us our vampiric bite as well as spider climb after level 3. Both of those are two very thematic vampire features, and we're just going to want to add more onto that. Something like a spellcaster or a martial character like Paladin could work pretty well and just feel very gothic in nature already. For us, though, we're going to go Ranger, and we're actually going to go Swarmkeeper Ranger. Now, if it's not obvious enough already, we're picking Swarmkeeper Ranger because we want to be followed around at all times by a swarm of bats. That's very thematic for our build and just works really well, but the mechanical features are also going to gel quite nicely too. At ninth level as a Swarmkeeper Ranger, we gain the spell Gaseous Form. And Gaseous Form can mimic a vampire's actual Misty Escape feature, which not many other features really are able to. It's not quite as good, but we're also not quite a full-fledged vampire from 5e's Monster Manual either, so we'll take what we can get. Yeah, the other thing that synergizes quite nicely is the Swarm Keeper's mechanical abilities to push either enemies around the battlefield or move ourselves casually around the battlefield whenever we attack an enemy. That plus the Dampyr's Spider Climb ability is going to be really nice for actually maneuvering around the battlefield. If we're in a dungeon, we don't have to think about just moving in a 2D plane with our Gathered Swarm ability. 
If we want to, we could actually move up walls and across ceilings and still attack with whatever weapon we have and use Gathered Swarm to still move us around the battlefield in that way. Eventually, we'll also be able to hover, which is also pretty thematic for a vampire-esque character as well. Overall, there's nothing that's going to really synergize with our vampiric bite, but the rest of our features, plus a lot of good flavoring around the idea of bats and sort of that gothic vampire feel, is going to really make us feel like a vampire character. Not to mention, vampires should be good at stealth, and being a ranger, and maybe a little more dex-based, will make us as good at stealth as we would expect to be. Our third monster in the Monster Mash is technically two because there's two options for how you want to do this one. We're going to be Dr. Frankenstein slash Frankenstein's monster. And the reason there's two options for this build is because there are two ways to approach it. If you'd rather be Dr. Frankenstein, because as we all know, Frankenstein is the doctor and the monster doesn't really have a name. It just is the monster that Frankenstein created. Then what we could do is we could be any lineage that we want and go Battlesmith Artificer maybe with a little bit of a dip into Necromancer just for some more undead theme. We could then have ourselves be Dr. Frankenstein and have our Steel Defender be themed more like a flesh golem of some sort with maybe some undead tendencies to it. And that could be our Frankenstein's monster. Option two is if we wanted to be just Frankenstein's monster, not the doctor, just one creature that is making its way through this unknown world because we have been resurrected or created from, well, the undead. If that's the sort of build that you were looking for, I would recommend taking the reborn lineage, again from Ravenloft, same as our Dampyr lineage was, and we're going to want to mix that with a regular lineage that would be relatively larger, at least thematically. Something like Goliath, maybe Minotaur, Luxodon, anything like that, just to have that size impact. <sighs> Although we don't actually gain any mechanical benefits from the ancestral legacy part of the reborn lineage, we just gain some skills or perhaps some speeds, it still will make us feel like a much larger than life creature the way that the Frankenstein's monster is supposed to feel. The class that we would then go, I think would still be Artificer and then go Armorer Artificer of all things. And the reason for this is because I think it would be really cool to flavor the Armorer Artificer as a Frankenstein's monster-like creation. Because the Armorer gets extra infusions and is able to use those infusions in their suit of armor, all we'd have to do is flavor it as rather than putting infused items into our armor, our armor is us, and we'd be infusing ourselves with various items. Just make our own hands magical. We make our own torso magical. We replace our head and make it magical, so on and so forth. Together, this would add for a very stitched together type of character in terms of our flavor. And I think that works really well for being the Frankenstein's monster itself. No doctor required. The final monster in our monster mash is our swamp creature. For this build, we are going to be a Simic hybrid. Simic Hybrid is a Magic the Gathering lineage from the Guildmaster's Guide to Ravnica crossover. Now, I haven't really used Simic Hybrid, and admittedly, I don't really know too much about it. However, I do know that a lot of its features that you can gain from this lineage are fish slash aquatic themed in nature, and that's really what we want with this build. As the swamp creature, we want to be able to breathe in both air and water. And at first level, the Simic Hybrid can gain the underwater adaptation, which gives us exactly that. Eventually, we'll be able to get another feature at level 5. And for those, we have a few different options we can use. Acid Spit is kind of like a little acid cantrip, but it's not necessarily too powerful, and we can't use it all the time, but it's not the end of the world. If we wanted to be a bit more tanky, we could take a carapace in order to just gain a flat plus one AC whenever we're not wearing heavy armor, which with this build, we're really not going to be wearing heavy armor, so that could work. And finally, we could also pick grappling appendages, which would just be extra tentacles for us. We just gain two extra tentacles that are capable of making unarmed strikes and grappling enemy creatures, but they're not good enough to actually use extra weapons or specialized equipment. When we get to level 5, I'd say you get to pick your favorite, 
but I'll assume that we pick grappling appendages just so we can have a couple extra tentacles with our swamp creature, and we can then grapple extra creatures as well. For our actual class, we're going to go with a warlock and be a fathomless warlock. The reason for this is because we get the tentacle of the deep feature. That's just more tentacles, which thematically is really awesome. But mechanically, if we're trying to grapple a bunch of creatures, which could be a little hard because we'd want our athletics to be good. And then once we are good at grappling and we do grapple a few creatures in combat, we can have the tentacle of the deep just attack those creatures for us as a bonus action. And if it hits, it's going to reduce their speed, meaning that even if the creatures get away from us, they're then going to have their speed reduced. So it's going to be harder for them to actually escape allowing for us to catch up with them and just grapple them all over again. Thematically, we want lots of tentacles and some aquatic ability in order to feel like this odd creature from the Black Lagoon, swamp thing, swamp creature. All right, time to summarize our builds. Overall, we certainly have quite the monster mash here. Most of these builds are a bit more thematic rather than mechanically powerful, but honestly, that's okay. I imagine that these builds would be a bit more likely to be used in a Halloween one-shot rather than a full campaign. But of course, they could be taken all the way to level 20 and used in a full campaign, and could actually even be pretty appropriate for like a Ravenloft or Gothic type of setting. To break down the summary of each build's strengths though, this is what we have. The werewolf has a lot of attacks and a fair bit of health slash damage resistance, making them very durable. Our vampire is stealthy and has plenty of battlefield mobility, able to move them up walls, across ceilings, and even eventually hover off the ground as well. Our Dr. Frankenstein, or just the Frankenstein's monster, depending on which path you picked for that one, has a lot of utility as an artificer and can bring a lot of support or versatility to any party role. And finally, our Swamp Creature has a lot of battlefield control with their grapple and speed reduction abilities, plus any other abilities that a Warlock would have access to. Overall, I'd say they make quite the monster mash and would work really well in a spooky D&D party together. Let me know what you thought of the build though, or what other Halloween monsters you would add to our monster mash. Thank you so much for joining me on the journey. I hope to see you in the next one, and happy Halloween.